there, this is Amy. Thanks so much for stopping by. Um, I am going to be showing you in this video how to paint a pumpkin design on a white wine glass. And this is the design or similar design that I just did on the black cardstock paper. And just to give you a preview of the glass that I've already painted, I always try to paint one glass before I actually do the video and then do the, the next class for the video. Um, so here it is. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I just basically did the design around the bowl of the glass and did not do any, any painting down the stem itself. Alright, so here it is. Same colors as I mentioned on the construction paper or the cardstock, the autumn leaves the Peridot, which is a metallic, and it's also one of the multi-surface paints. The Wicker White, another multi-surface paint, which is the Burnt Umber. Gotta love the Burnt Umber. Berry Wine. I to make sure I got everything. Oh, the School Bus Yellow. Thicket, which is my one of my favorite colors to use when I'm painting any kind of leaves or um, grass, that kind of thing. These are the 20 ounce white wine glasses, and what I'm going to start out with doing, I with this design went ahead and did a base of using this brush, which is a scruffy brush well used scruffy brush with that. Did the, just the pumpkin design on the glass and I went ahead and did it this way doing the design ahead of time or not ahead, I'm sorry doing the pouncing of the orange ahead of time is what I meant to say just to give it a good base coat before I actually painted on it and I painted the, put the, the lines and stuff on it with the the orange, you know, the, the uh, fall leaves and the burnt umber and the school bus yellow. Just to give it some base, do it here too. Trying to keep it more opaque. And once again, I like to remind you when you're hand painting and you're doing multiples, make sure that you let people know, especially if you're selling these to people, that no two will be identical. I'm not using a pattern. This is being done by freehand. So uh, if you're someone that wants, wants the paintings to be precise and identical, then you might want to set up a stencil of some sort to do yours with so that they will be more consistent. Even with that, keep in mind it still may not be identical. And I also do find that if you are painting, if you paint, like say you have an order, unless you've painted them in advance and you're selling them that way, if you do, are gonna be doing multiples to sell to somebody, do them at the same time. Reason being is that I find that you're more, you're more, your design is more consistent if you're doing them at the same time. Say for instance, if I did this, and then say maybe a month later, somebody wanted to order from me, the design may not be the same. It'll be similar, but it's not gonna be the same. And I just want people to understand that this is done by freehand, and you risk that they are not gonna be identical by you know when you space them out like that. It's just, just a reminder. I did clean my glasses in advance, and um, I'm just you know starting to add the paint to them now, allowing them to dry and then drying them off, and then we'll continue on here once this dries. Now you can hit it with the hair dryer. My hair dryer went kaput, so I have to just give it some drying time before I go over it and add the details to the pumpkin. So I'm going to give it that time, allow it some time to dry, and I will be back with you.
Okay, so I've gone ahead and I went ahead and painted on my base from my pumpkin. And just so that I can go over the paints that I'm using, if you didn't actually see the painted design on the black cardstock, I'm using the Peridot, which is a multi-surface paint. I believe it's an enamel, at least it comes off looking like one. Burnt Umber, which is also multi-surface. A school bus yellow, which is the folk art enamels. Autumn leaves, also folk art enamels. The thicket green, which is called thicket, folk art enamels. Berry wine, also folk art enamels. And wicker white, also folk, folk art enamels. Brushes I'm going to be using are my one stroke number 12 flat brush. The Donna Dewberry, it's a, a number zero round brush for nails. And then this is a Martha Stewart, I don't even know what these are called, pouncers or something that I'm going to use to make some berries with um, as we continue on with the project here and finish it up. All right, so I've got my base. I'm going to go ahead and double load my flat brush with the autumn leaves and the school bus yellow and then start putting the, the design on my pumpkin. And as I've mentioned before, and I like to keep mentioning this, and I'm sorry if you get tired of hearing me say it, but just make sure if you are painting these for um, sale to people, Make sure you do let them know that no two will be identical. And I can't stress that enough because just like doing this, I've had a few days away from this design, didn't get to come back to it as quickly as I would like to have, and I know that it's not going to look exactly like the one I did before. I know that. It's a fact, Jack. It's not going to. Um, okay, so here we go. Just going to do some stroke work over the top of what I already painted. Very easy. Easy to do. And it's okay if you go outside of the initial design shape. I mean, you can always wipe it off, or if you want to make it a little bit larger, that's fine. By doing what I just did, or what I did as far as tapping on the base of the pumpkin design. It just will give it more durability. That's the whole point. But you can make it a little bit bigger. You know, I have come underneath it a little bit, which is fine. All right, so I'm gonna go back in and start adding some of my burnt umber to this. And I'll, you know, I'll work it. It'll be worked out because you're kind of doing some layering and when I go outside of the lines here I've got to make it a little bit thicker because the initial is thicker if that makes sense because remember what I said before with the uh, with pa the um, <clears throat> excuse me glass painting is the thicker you apply the paint the more durability it will have, it'll you know be uh, you'd be less able to chip it easily. The thinner the paint goes on, the more risk you have of that paint chipping. But I, I do have to admit, if you take care of these and treat them like fine china, you're not going to be as apt to have chipping or they will last longer. If you have a commercial grade dishwasher, I would totally bypass even placing my painted glassware in there. Definitely do not place your painted glassware on the bottom of the dishwasher. Because I will guarantee you will have missing paint when you pull that out of the dishwasher. It will be melted off. 
if you have any paint left. Just saying. Because that's, that's what happens, it melts off. So just be careful of that, because it is a hazard of using the dishwasher. Uh, place it on the top rack. But honestly, if you want to have longevity for your painted glassware, I would hand wash it. Don't use a, a harsh detergent on it. Don't let it sit in water. If you let your, your glass sit in standing water, that will also loosen up the paint and cause it to come off. Um, just some little, little tips and tricks that I've learned throughout the years. Um, this is my favorite kind of paint to work with just because of the type of painting style I do. Um, I know people that have loved the Liquitex Glossies, uh, the PBO or PBO, however you want to say it, however it's said properly, is uh, paint that I know is very durable. I just happened to try this brand and really liked it, and it stuck. And I'll just have to be honest with you. It, it really did. I mean, I, I really, for whatever reason, I don't know. I like the coverage. I like the way it handles. I like the fact that you don't actually have to bake it. I mean, you can, and it's recommended if possible, but it doesn't have to be. Some of the paints out on the market right now have to be. Some of the glass has to, some of them require the glass to be, um, you know, some additional things be treated. Uh, your glass needs to be treated uh, before you paint on it. I'm not really sure the specific instructions because this paint doesn't require that. This brand doesn't require that. I don't, I don't know if it's, it's putting some kind of a product on your glass to get it to adhere better, more durability. I'm not, I'm just not really sure, so I don't want to say, but I just, I've had people ask me, and I know of people that have used other products that did require that, um, but this one does not. And like I said, you don't even have to bake it. You can let it cure for 21 days, and I'm not going to say that you can't use your glassware in that time frame, but it's... You know, be careful with it if you are using it, because it will dry. It will dry to the touch. It's just that paint, all paint has some type of a curing time to where it's completely, completely dry. It happens to be with this paint that it's uh, 21 days if you're not baking it. Now, if you bake it, then it's, really, it's as soon as you get done baking it. But like I said, I, I have always been happy with this product. And I have a, a mug upstairs that I painted. I'm trying to think why I painted it. Painted it, I don't know. Maybe just back when I was painting glass mugs. I can't remember. But even though we really haven't been careful with it, it's, it's a glass that everybody just kind of pulls out of the cupboard. It's a, it's a coffee, coffee cup. People pull it out of the cupboard and use it, and it has been left in standing water and all. I kind of cringe when I see that. It it uh, really has held up nicely. I mean, you know, some of the design has come off, but I'll be honest with you, with the amount of wear and tear, you would think it would even be rougher looking than it is. And it's really not that bad. I'm just trying to, you know, taking my time here, just trying to make sure that I've got, enough, you know, good coverage, the coverage I like to have. I'm painting glass. I'm just going to fill this in, in the center here.
like I said, I don't have as much brown on this one as I did my other one. So that's why one of my points to, you know, not telling somebody that they're going to be identical. They'll be similar, have a similar design, but definitely not the same. I mean, and if you think you want it, you know, want it darker, oops, you can go back over it and paint it more. Right now, I'm just trying to get it filled in, get make sure it's got good coverage, and then go from there with it. So I know two pumpkins are alike, even in the field, right? Just like the snowflakes. They're all different. All different. Okay. Just a little bit more darkness. And like I said, if you're not happy with the, with the, the shadows or, or whatnot, the darkness, just go back and paint over it. I mean, you can keep doing it till you get the get it just right. It's okay. It's okay to do that. Now I'm just going to leave this one like this. It's fine. And my next thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and paint the stem in there. I say I recommend definitely doing your painting stuff is to paint them as close in time together as you can because this is an example of where it's a little bit different than what the initial project was. It's similar design but it would have been more uh, it would have been closer in design had I had I actually painted it sooner. All right so I'm going to go ahead and put my little stem in here this is going to be just like a crazy little stem. Not one that you normally see on, on pumpkins, but that's okay. It's not supposed to be. Just so that you're aware of that. It's a, a more unique design. And I'm also trying to make it more opaque if possible. right here. Scratch it off. sure it has good coverage right here. I don't want to see through to my pumpkin. Kind of my focus. All right. You can make your stem brown or green. It doesn't really matter. I just decided to do some do some different coloring here. stick with that. Next I'm going to go ahead and add in some leaves around the, the glass. Sure Alright, All right. these are kind of fun leaves. They're really pretty easy. The problem I have with these is getting, because I'm using that metallic paint, is getting them to be opaque looking. So I am going to go back over them a little bit here. Add more paint into them. Okay, 
I did my initial wiggling and all. Just I want them to be too thinly painted or they could they could you know the paint may not uh, hold up as well. Trim my glass. One thing nice about doing glass painting. And I know I mention this often. Is that hey. It's easy to paint because you can actually turn it in the direction you need it to go. If you make a mistake. Or if you don't like it, I can't say necessarily make a mistake because you may not like the design that you've painted. Then just wash it off, start again. And this is one thing I don't like about this. It's getting the veining in. Because I don't want it to be the clear glass that I'm seeing. It's okay to go over the next leaf. You know, when you're making it, go over that leaf that you already painted. It's fine. Not a problem. And once again, I'm going to add some more paint to this. Because I'm definitely... The metallic is a little bit thinner. Must not have as much uh, pigment to it. It's the only thing I can think. So it's definitely not being opaque on my glass. back down this way. Now I'm just kind of wiggling it a little bit and coming back up and then pulling it down. You know, there's so many ways to make leaves. So many different styles. Again, this is a little bit different than working on paper. I should say it's a lot different than working on paper. But you get the gist. I mean, they're kind of little fun, fun leaves. Like I said, I really don't want it to be that it's the glass showing through um, when I'm putting the veining in. And you can go from this direction up if you want to do so. Um, I just want to make sure that it's kind of similar to my other one. I think I did have a leaf down there. Okay. I'm referring back to that as I'm painting. Oops, the opposite direction. And that's okay. I mean, if you want to do some with the light on the outside, some with the light on the inside, that's fine. I, For this purpose, I am just doing all of it one, one direction, trying to at least. Kind of did a fail on this one, but it's all right. Now, I get a lot of questions too where people will ask me, do I, you know, use anything like spray varnish or whatnot? No, I don't. Now, the only thing I might put on top of this is I have done the clear medium uh, to give it some extra, extra protection. Now, Mod Podge actually has a dishwasher safe product for glass. I have been known to put some of that on my projects and that the purpose of that is is just to give it some added protection and that seems to do well like that. I'm liking that, like that. Um, that seems to do well so you know if you feel the need you don't have to put anything on it it's not a not a requirement or something that actually is stated, you know, with the with the use of this paint. So it's definitely not something that you have to do. I mean, obviously you don't have to do anything, but as far as your know, recommendations from the manufacturer, it's definitely not. And 
like I said, with this, the, these leaves on this uh, particular design, I can't comment enough how much I love the shininess of the, the contrast with the, the peridot and the thicket green. And I'm just trying to gently go back over and touch it up because I do like more of an opaque look if possible. So I'm just kind of tapping, tapping more paint on just to make sure that it's filled in. Again, if you, if you don't mind it being uh, more of a clear look, that's fine too. I just happen to really like the look of it being opaque. So, matter of preference, not something that you have to follow. But I do highly recommend if you're thinking about doing glass painting, even if you're just thinking about doing it for gifts, get out there, try some of the paint that's out there on the market. There's such a variety to choose from. You know, give it a try. Buy a few bottles and do a little little project with it and see, you know, is this the type of paint I really want to use. Uh, do some research on it to see, you know, the durability. I know there for a while I was doing some dishes and there's, you know, some question about food safe and, you know, I'd have people tell me that like certain brands were food safe. And then I'd read up, well, they're really not food safe and it's very confusing. So, you know, I did some research and contacted people trying to find out. Because basically, with the paint I'm using, folk art enamels are non-toxic. So that would make you think, okay, well, then that should be fine for food usage. Well, not necessarily. But then I did some further, and I keep clanking the other glasses behind here. I did some further research and found that... It's not necessarily that the paint itself is not food safe. What it can be is that you have um, you have a product that in time can crack. Bacteria can get underneath and like or into the cracked areas of the paint. And that can be where the issue falls. So I would just recommend reverse painting since the definitive really wasn't there. That you do, you know, do your, be safe. Don't be silly, be safe. And to do reverse painting or something similar to where, you know, the food. Food is not even coming in contact with your paint. That way you don't have to worry about it. And if you're painting it for yourself and you want to take the risk, then knock yourself out, as I say. I just didn't want the worry of what if I made somebody sick. I, I just don't want to worry about that. I have a crack in this mouth. I do have a crack in this mouth, or a scratch. Hmm. Well, I guess this one isn't going to be sold. I'm just drawing some branches in, just kind of randomly. Nothing really earth shattering on this end. And it's just to give the glass a finished look, more of a fallish, pumpkin-y kind of a look. I guess I'm just kind of referring back to my other design just to see that it's something similar. Definitely not identical by any means. <clears throat> and I appreciate you stopping by to you know, view my videos. Uh, if you like my glass painting and my just painting in general, Please feel free to, uh, of course, follow me. I would love that. 
share my videos with others that you think might enjoy them too. I would definitely appreciate that as well. That helps my channel. And, uh, you know, continue following me. Click on the link at the bottom if you haven't aren't already subscribed to my channel. And if you <clears throat> want to make sure you get the notifications, make sure you hit the bell that you'll see. Now, I, of course, see it in different spots, but typically it would be under here as well. But who knows? Get that a. Hopefully, that's where they're at. Now also, when I'm painting this, other than painting the pumpkin on, you know, doing the initial design, I pretty much just did this wet on wet, didn't give it a chance to dry, but you can. If you feel the need to give it some time to dry before you move on, because when I start painting on the flowers then you're going to find your oops it's a little heavy don't do it like this I put too heavy of a actually I'm tapping this and and kind of tapping off some of the paint you can come back in with some white thread in there if you want like that with some interest or twirl it a little bit if you want. But if you do it wet on wet, that's okay. Just know that you may get some paint, you know, some other color mixed in from the underneath. But again, that's fine. I don't mind it. I guess if you can add up the lines, you're getting green on this. I'm getting green from so I'm not going to hit any green. I messed up somewhere, huh? Or you could just try to lightly put some of this in here for contrast. It's up to you. Like I said, I'm not a real stickler with things, as you can probably tell. With my painting, it's pretty much whatever floats your boat. And you can just put a few, or you can put as many, just to give it some interest. Some of my dots are getting a little heavy. Like heavier than my other one. And even, like I said, if I decided to do this on this one, and I wanted to go back to the previous one I'd already painted for my sample, I could do that still. And it's not, it's not too late. Alright, so, got the vines in. I'm going to go ahead now and paint in these uh, few little flowers that I painted before. Now they, because I'm going to be painting over the pumpkin, could pull in some of the other color, which again is fine. You know, to have more than two colors is, is great on a design. And then a flower, but not, it's not a problem. All right, and like I said, with the paint not having dried, I am at risk of, of that happening. I want, might want to throw some more white into this, which I can. Okay. Again, you see how easy it is to actually go back over it if you're not happy with it. sure I'm keeping this in the <laughs> keep wanting to pull the glass towards me for some reason you could do like 
two separate strokes, so I'll just do a little up at the top. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so we have that pretty simple. Again, most of this is being done with my flat brush, my 12, number 12. two separate petals. Other way is fine. Anyhow, um, you know, I will continue to try to paint. I'm trying to get get us more of a schedule down for submitting videos. It's just hard because I'm presently trying to get my parents home ready for sale because my father passed away in June or June May and my mother was already passed uh, well almost five years ago coming up to five years in December um, so I'm busy doing that plus I babysit my grandchildren so my life is pretty full but I really like doing the videos and I'm hoping to get better at them as I go. Learn, 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 learn. You're never too old, that's what I always say. And I'm hoping to not ever be too old to learn new things. I always saw that fear in my parents and I swore I didn't want to be like them. And there's some things I don't tr trust technology-wise, but, you know, sometimes I think to myself, well, is that because I'm older, or is that because I really shouldn't trust some of the stuff that we're doing with technology? Good question, right? Who knows? All right, so I'm done with those flowers, well, painting the, the petal parts. I'm going to go ahead and dot in some of the burnt umber. This is where the fingernail brush comes into play. It's making these cute little dots. And like I so said, this petal has a lot of green in it on, this, on the flower because obviously it's painted over top of the leaf. If you want you could go back over that to add some more white into it if, if that bothered you. If not, just leave it be. Alright, then I'm going to go back in, put some white on here. And make the center stand out a little bit more. different little handles on them. Then I'm going back in with the school bus yellow just to even add a little bit more detail to. Fun pattern for fall. Keep in mind if you're a DIYer and you like you know, creating your own gifts, painted glassware is always a good one to give. And here you go. I do believe we are finished. I hope that you like this. 
um, please comment below let me know what you would like to see me paint in the future any kind of specific designs if you have any helpful hints I'm open to hearing those if you have any questions please feel free to ask and until the next video I do appreciate you stopping by and viewing this video and look forward to having you follow me to the next one and until then have a good evening.